Hey everyone, this is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of Iry Financial. Welcome to another episode of Ad Bits, where I will be sharing bits of knowledge about self-directed retirement. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Ad Bits. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And on today's Ad Bits, I'm going to be talking about the solo 401k loan. The solo 401k loan is probably one of the most attractive options for establishing a solo 401k for many reasons. The first is it's really the only way you can borrow funds from a retirement plan without triggering any type of distribution or engaging in a prohibited transaction. For example, you cannot borrow anything from an IRA, Roth IRA, SEP IRA, or simple IRA. It's just not allowed. The only way you can get money from an IRA is taking a distribution. And if you're under 59 and a half, the distribution will be subject to tax plus a 10% early distribution penalty. And if you're over 59 and a half, it will be subject to income tax. Yes, a Roth IRA would be tax-free if you're over 59 and a half, and the Roth's been open at least five years. But if you're lucky enough to be eligible for a solo 401k, meaning you're self-employed, you have a business with no full-time employees other than yourself, other partner, or spouse, or spouses of the partner, and it's a US-based business, you can set up a solo 401k plan. Just two simple eligibility requirements. It's gotta be a US business. Doesn't have to be Google. Doesn't have to be Tesla or Apple. Doesn't even have to have any profit. Just needs to have the anticipation of revenue and some business activity. Number two, there cannot be any non-owner full-time employees. And full-time means over a thousand hours of working during the taxable year. So once you are lucky enough to be self-employed and thus eligible for a solo 401k, there's a whole slew of reasons to be excited. Number one, you get to contribute a whole lot to a solo K. 58,000 if you're under 50 or 64,500 if you're over 50. And that could be broken down into employee deferral, 19.5 or 26,000 if you're over 50, dollar for dollar. That can be in pre-tax or Roth. And then the profit sharing component, which is 20% of your net Schedule C amount or 25% of your W-2 amount if you are a W-2 employee. And all that can equal 58,000 or 64,5 if you're over 50. Now, I'd say the second most popular reason for setting up a 401k is the loan. It's actually the most popular exemption to the 4975 prohibited transaction rules. Now, number one, you got to make sure your plan has a loan feature. Not every plan has a loan. If you go to a traditional bank or brokerage firm and get a free plan, you're not going to get a loan. Why? They don't want you to pull money out. They want you to invest it with them. Plus, they don't want to deal with any administrative hurdles and burdens of administering a loan. So they basically lock down your plan, give you only simple features like pre-tax contributions and requiring you to invest in what they sell. Not that I can blame them. It's a business model. Why would they let you take money out of a free plan and send it somewhere else? Totally understand their rationale. But there are companies like IRA Financial and other wonderful companies that are in the self-directed retirement industry that don't make money selling investments. We make money selling plans and doing the plan administration. We facilitate investments for a flat fee, we're non-fiduciary, and we don't provide investment advice. So if you're looking to get a 401k plan that has a loan feature that will allow you to borrow up to $50,000, or 50% of your account value, whatever is less, then you have some great options. Okay, so the loan, number one, is a super attractive feature because it's, as I mentioned, the only legal way without violating the prohibited transaction rules that you can get money out of a plan tax-free, penalty-free. Second advantage, you're paying yourself back, right? It's a loan. So it's a five-year loan, payable at least quarterly. You can pay it back sooner, like weekly, or bi-weekly, 
or monthly, but the longest period between loan payments is quarterly. So a five-year term, payable at least four times a year, at a stated interest rate, which is as low as prime as per the Wall Street Journal, which is currently 3.25%. And this is the lowest it's been in several years. It, Pre-COVID, it was in the f over 5%, approximately 5.25% to be exact, to get a loan. Now it's 3.25%. So super cheap. You can use a higher interest rate if you wish. What does that do? Well, it allows you to push more money into your plan, right? Because if you borrow $50,000, Instead of paying 3.25%, you want to pay 8%, all that will go back into your plan. So at the end of the five years, you're going to have a lot more money in your plan than if you pay 3.25%. That being said, most people who do the loan need the money. There's cash flow issues, pay off health care, debt, go on vacation, whatever it is. You can use the funds for any purpose. No requirements. It doesn't have to be used for investments. You can use it for anything. You can buy yourself a watch, car, whatever, doesn't matter. The only requirements are as follows. Five-year loan, payback at least quarterly, interest rate as low as prime, which is 3.25%, and it's a straight line loan. <clears throat> so it's not a balloon payment, it's not only interest, it's principal and interest together, divided over five years, including interest, okay? Pretty simple, we have a loan calculator, on our website so you can figure out what you're going to pay um but you're looking at you know if you do a fifty thousand five year loan uh 3.25 percent about 900 or so dollars every quarter um and again you're paying yourself back so instead of paying a credit card company a friend a bank uh one of these hard money lenders online you're paying yourself back so you're getting tax-free penalty-free use of those funds number one and number two, you're paying yourself back. So it's a double benefit. So a really cool thing. A couple other things, some housekeeping. Number one, if you're using the loan to buy a principal residence, you can actually take a longer period loan, 15 years. You don't have to do five years. So that's another advantage. Number two, once you pay the loan back, you have to wait 12 months and then you can do the full amount again. So again, it's 50,000 or 50% of your account value, whatever's less. So if you have $20,000 in your plan, you can borrow 10. If you have $100,000 in your plan, you can borrow 50. If you have $60,000 in your plan, you can borrow 30. If you have a million dollars in your plan, you're capped at 50K. So it's the lesser of 50K or 50% of your account value. You don't have to take the full amount. You could customize your plan documents to allow for multiple loans. I know some clients that do up to 10. So you say, okay, I need like 10 grand now do a loan. Maybe a year later, like I can do another five or another eight, do another loan. And of course you're paying both those loans down. So as you're paying the loans down, you can start paying back and taking out more loans. <clears throat> and the formula is pretty simple. You have to look at the value of your loan 12 months prior. And then, so let's say you borrowed 50 and now you have an outstanding um, amount of 30. So you've paid back 20 as of 12 months ago, you can reborrow that 20. Right, so you have to look at what your outstanding amount was 12 months ago minus the 50 or minus the amount you borrowed. And then that difference, you can take out another loan 12 months after that. So it's pretty simple. It's a great opportunity. If you have cash flow needs, especially with COVID, it was a real uh, helpful tool. A lot of taxpayers used to kind of get through the first part of COVID before the CARES Act and some of the other stimulus payments uh, arrived. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with doing a loan. Just make your plan, make sure your plan documents have it. Again, not all plan documents do have it. So if you're really interested in doing a loan, make sure you work with a company like IRA Financial that could provide you a plan document with the loan. You can do the loan out of the pre-tax or the Roth if you have both. Um, it can come out of any uh, part of uh, plan funds. You're just capped at the 50,000 or 50%, whatever's less, um, five year, 15 years if it's a primary residence. Lowest interest rates prime, 3.25%. <clears throat> the maximum interest rate, I would say, you don't want to go above the usury laws, which are essentially the loan sharking laws in your state. So just be cautious of that. Like if you want to do a 50% interest rate, just make sure you're not violating any state rules. Um, but otherwise, you know, the most of the people I work with will do loans from prime to about 10%, depending on how aggressive they want to be. 
kind of dump more money in their plan. Although during COVID, you definitely um, saw more people stay along the lines of the lower uh, interest rate, more along the lines of Prime. So I think it's a really cool feature. That is one of the features that makes the solo 401k plan so special and unique. Um, it's also available for regular 401k plans, right? But again, I'm focusing this podcast on solo 401ks because that's really what I specialize helping individuals, small business owners, sole proprietors, uh, getting a uh, retirement plan that maximizes their retirement and investment opportunities. So if you work at Google or you know, ABC Corp and there is a 401k, ask HR, ask your plan administrator if there's a 401k loan feature. Many businesses offer it. Mostly uh, larger ones do. Some small ones do not because of the administration timing and um, burden involved. But if you ask, maybe they will allow you to do it. Again, it's just really turning on the option. Really, all 401k plans have the built-in loan option in the document. It's just a matter of whether the employer will turn on the option uh, for the participants. Um, Something to consider. You don't have to do a loan, obviously. So make sure you pay it back. If you fail to pay it back, it's a taxable distribution on the outstanding amount plus 10% if you're under 59% and a half. So just be careful about that. Don't borrow, borrow more than you need. See if you can do multiple loans. So this way you don't have to worry about cash flow and paying back the interest on the loan, which is uh, important because you don't want to be in default. You technically, most employers will give you the year to make up any uh, default payments, but usually past 1231, they won't let you do that. So let's make sure that you're super uh, conservative and cautious when taking a loan. Uh, I suggest taking only what you need, going back and taking a, an additional loan if need be, but don't just take 50K because it's there and let it sit in your bank account. Uh, first of all, it can grow uh, without tax in the 401k, which is important. And number two, you got to pay interest on that money. And if you're not using the money for any purpose, then you're just paying interest for no reason. So it's not horrible because you're paying yourself back. So you're acting as your own bank, which is pretty cool, but it's still cash flow and still money that you're paying that you can use for other purposes like growing tax deferred in the 401k, whether it's investing in stocks, mutual funds, or real estate. So there you have it. The solo K uh, loan feature, again, is one of the features that makes the solo 401k more popular. And uh, I think a more robust and superior retirement plan to the SEP IRA or the simple IRA, which are probably uh, the, the biggest competitors to the solo K for small businesses. For some reason, you still see small businesses setting up SEPs and simples, probably because their advisors aren't uh, very uh, educated on the powers of the solo K. Um, and that's my job to help educate people to the super advantages of the solo K, the employee deferral, the profit sharing, the SEP IRA only is profit sharing. SEP IRA does not have a catch-up contribution if you're over 50. Solo K does, 6,500. SEP IRA does not have a loan feature. SEP IRA does not have a Roth option. So all those things you're losing out by going SEP or simple, whereas if you went to the Solo K, you would have all those advantages, plus the very important Solo 401k loan feature. So. There you go. Um, I hope I at least informed you that this loan option does exist, even if you have your own solo K. If you have a SEP IRA and you really want the loan feature, then you can just go solo. You can set up a solo, close your SEP, roll the funds tax-free from the SEP into the solo, and then use the loan option and borrow up to 50K or 50% of your account value or whatever's less. If you want to use those funds to buy a primary residence, first time home buyer, you can borrow um, and pay back over 15 years. There's also hardship distributions um, for first home, home buyers up to 10K without an early distribution penalty. So there's some really cool stuff if you're looking to uh, tap into some of that money and buy a house. If you're just looking to use that money for other purposes, uh, cash flow, personal debt, whatever it is, five year loan, minimum interest rate today, we're talking in 3.25%, which is prime as per the Wall Street Journal, May 2021. The rate will obviously go up as interest rates go up, but right now interest rates are pretty flat, uh, probably not gonna go anywhere for at least 12 to 14 months. So I think that 3.25% is pretty safe. 
that it will be sticking around for some time. So good time to take a loan. You're paying yourself back. You get cash free, tax free, penalty free use of those funds. You get some cash flow help and you're paying yourself back. So double benefit in my books. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, uh, check out our website. Uh, I've done a bunch of blogs, Forbes articles, and some other YouTube videos at IRA Financial that you can check out and learn more. But I think this is a pretty good in-depth uh, bit of information on the solo 401k loan feature. So thanks for listening if you're doing so. Thanks for watching if you're doing so on YouTube. Don't forget, I got two other really cool podcast called Ad Mail, which is a weekly podcast that drops generally every Thursday. And I have Adam Talks, which drops every Wednesday, which will give you my tax attorney's take on the most update, current investment, retirement, tax, and alternative asset issues that, are, that we're facing uh, currently. So pretty cool podcast. Just did one on the Biden capital gains proposal, and I'm doing one on the Biden estate tax shocker. So that's going to be a pretty cool one. So definitely check that out if you're interested in how the new Biden tax proposals could impact you from a capital gains as well as an estate tax planning perspective. Otherwise, thanks again for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay safe and talk to everyone again next week. Thank you.